we're spraying today is a wetland restoration project is down beside the Maharangi River and the problem we have is it's full of uh, a particular weed called Glyceria which is a tall grass it's called sweet reed grass sometimes so the mission for today is simply to get in there with a, a fairly a very standard mix of chemicals so that come winter we'll be ready to um, completely replant the uh, and start the process of restoring the wetland itself with the weed gone. So this is the critical first step in getting the, the restoration uh, underway. I'm David McLeod. I was principal here uh, since Colin Binstead and his team appointed me in 2002 through until the end of 2020. Worked with a number of different boards of trustees during that time and it was in the last five years uh, that we really got engaged in this Living Classroom project. Yeah, I'm Colin Binstead and as David said, um, I was on the board of Maharangi College and I've always had a passion for the environment and the uniqueness of the ecosystems that we've got here. And I worked with a guy called Wayne Johnson who had a concept of a living classroom and we had a couple of parks we were looking at and we knocked on the door for David McLeod and Dean Iverson and uh, we suggested to them that they adopt a park and turn it into a living classroom. And uh, they said, well, what about the park right next door? And uh, that's what started it. So we've been really fortunate with this project. Um, we've had a number of key people <laughs> who have just arrived on the scene at the right moment. One was our, our board chair, Dean Iverson, who's always been passionate about the uh, rebuilding connections with nature for our students and creating a living classroom within the school. Another was uh, Colin Binstead, a previous board chair, arriving in my office with his friend Wayne and talking to us about getting a sustainability project going. Another was us as a school identifying this reserve area here, 9.4 hectares owned by the council and full of weeds and pests, just waiting for restoration. The council has been absolutely wonderful and has been supportive the whole way through and training our students and trapping and identifying pests and weeds. In terms of the main obstacles, obviously uh, getting across the river. In the end we went with the pontoon uh, and that seems to be working quite successfully. I believe that uh, getting the kids over here to do the restoration, to see the forest being restored is going to be healthy not just for the environment but for the students as well. So I also um, was really fortunate to have on our management team, uh, Miss Hutton, who has been passionate about this project from day one. And she's put her heart and soul into it. And since I left, I know that she has continued and has continued to develop the ecological programs uh, across the curriculum, and particularly this year nine program, getting all the students over here. Our seven and eights, so they've got land on the perimeter of the school that borders the river and they've been allocated into syndicates and they are responsible for the pest plant removal. That pest plant removal allows for the reforestation naturally from the native trees that are there. The year nines have a two day offline program that every classroom goes through and that's called the living classroom experience. When the year nines cross over to the other side of the river they go through a rotation of four different aspects. One of those is trapping and three pest plants. Most of those sessions for the classes have been on Acmena, Privet and Ginger. The kids actually learn how to remove those pest plants and they cut right down the bottom and they've got a bottle of poison that goes around the um, circumference of the root and that's how they um, learn about the management. So on the school we have four trapping teams. They've been trapping for two years and the trapping has been hugely successful. The other day for the year nine living classroom experience is a climb up Tamahunga. So they go up and they're having to stop and look and take some, um, find the leaves that correlate with the cards that they've got to be able to identify those plants. The living classroom also extends school-wide for volunteer actions. We've been for three years now going to Scandritz, one of our regional parks, 
and doing plantings there and that happens every year. In the restoration we've just had a massive drive with many students from year 7 to 13 involved in planting uh, nearly two and a half thousand plants into the wetland across the river. It's been an awesome process because we've been supported by local experts. So we've had Tim Armitage from Forest and Bird, Pip Greenslade who is a wetland expert coming in and giving their time to us and knowledge of what we could do with that space, what steps we've had to take to make it happen. I love that this is a whole community push with uh, the school and the school reciprocating where it can and helping the community do things that come out of the whole concept of the living classroom. And all these people coming in and helping the college um, out of the goodness of their hearts, their passion to see this place restored, but their passion to see our school community use that knowledge, have that knowledge, grow in that knowledge. It's beautiful and it's a really beautiful part of what's happening here through the Living Classroom.